Hallelujah. It is great to thank the Lord because he's faithful. And amen in all of his ways. Father, we just praise you. We thank you, Father God, Lord, for your word. We thank you, Father God, for your presence in this place tonight. We thank you, Lord God, for, Lord, because you have received our worship, Lord, even as, as, an, as this offering, Father. Lord, be unto you, Lord God, tonight as a sweet-smelling savor into your nostrils, Lord, because, Lord, you love your people. And, Father God, you desire to bless your people, Father. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord God, for this offering tonight. We ask you, Lord, that you, you multiply it, Lord, to the furtherance of your kingdom. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Well, it's been a long time coming. This I, I, I you know, I, I've been wanting to... Uh, to, to share about this. I've shared it in the church. I've shared it at World Outreach Ministries uh, here, right from this pulpit, uh, this mess, some of this message, not all of it, because the Lord keeps on expanding it. You know, if you desire, if, if you desire the Lord, then you must desire Him. If you desire the Lord, there's nothing that God won't do. To bring you to where he wants you so that his kingdom will be fulfilled. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And I would like to share some of those things tonight. I brought two things here tonight. This, this electronic piece this thing here that, I've, that I'm, I'm, I'm sort of having a battle with it. And, uh, but, uh, the, and, the, and actually the last time I, 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 I stood at this pulpit and preached a message... It gave up on me. So I, I, I said, tonight, you're not going to do that to me. So I put it in paper, all right? But anyways, I like to follow it because it's a little bit more, uh, you know, I can move it around a bit more. And the, the paper here, I have to sort of uh, read it. But I'd like to share a little something with you first before I start here tonight. Uh, about a year ago, you know, uh, I, I, as you probably know, uh, two years ago, two, three years ago almost now, uh, the pastor from this church uh, passed away in a, in a brutal accident. And uh, he, was a, he was one of those guys that loved excitement, that loved danger a little bit, but too much. Uh, and uh, he was a pilot. I went up flying with him one time, and he put me through an experience that I had never been before. Uh, and then he was also a motorcycle kind of fella, and, and uh, he loved his motorcycle. Got an accident a year prior to this, and broke his shoulder, blade, and a couple of ribs, and you name it. And I went to him, and I said to him, I said, you know, it's time for you to... You know, you're getting a little bit too old now. It's time for you to get rid of this thing. Oh, no, he says. Well, uh, anyways, he didn't. And, but a year after that, he got into a real bad accident and ended up in the hospital for five weeks. And then the Lord took him home. But the man was an amazing guy. And he had started World Outreach Ministries. Pastor Hank knew him well. And uh, the thing about it is that I ended up by, by being, by, I was his assistant at the time, and I ended up by having to take over here at World Outreach Ministries as a pastor. But I always knew the Lord, I mean, so many times uh, uh, those situations happened a few times with me, and, uh, and uh, to take over as a pastor and to become a senior pastor was not what God had called us to do. And so I stood in this pulpit and I said to the congregation that, that yes, we need to, to continue. We need to, to, you know, and the Lord is showing me now that I need to take, to, to take direction of the church, but we will find a new pastor. And we have. And, and last Sunday, actually, we actually, uh, uh, what's to call the, 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 the 
but my, we, we brought him anyways. We, we installed him as a senior pastor of World Outreach Ministries. And a, about a year before that, about a year ago, uh, I started, uh, uh, there was something going on with my mind, my brain, my, in my, my head and stuff. And, and uh, uh, in my family, there's a lot of this, 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 this uh, disease called uh, dementia. And, and uh, all of a sudden, my mind, I, I, uh, you know, I, I'd stand at the pulpit and try to preach, and, and uh, I'd lose myself in that. And so I wanted to share that with you guys tonight so that you can stand with me. Because I've determined... You know, I, a few weeks ago, I went down, to, I went to see my brother and a few of my sisters. And, and, you know, I come from a big family. I come from a family of 19 children. My father and mother had 19 children. And uh, so the oldest ones right now uh, are all, you know, they don't know you anymore, okay, because of this dementia and whatever. And I... I stood with my brother a few weeks ago. My, my brother, I have a, a younger brother in Windsor. And him and I, we, we stood together with my other brother in Sudbury. And uh, because he's pretty well gone now as well. And he's younger than I am. And my brother Jacques and I decided, you know, we prayed. And we said, we're not going to stand for this. Jesus says that I am healed by his stripes. Amen. So therefore, we broke the curse upon us. So I'm asking you to stand with me tonight. So therefore, that's why I have all of this stuff here. Okay? But I know what God wants me to say here because the Lord has been talking to me about this for a long time. I believe that the church of Jesus Christ does not know their God. And, and we're not in, you know, somehow we haven't been interested enough to, to, uh, to seek the Lord the way he desires to be sought. But the scripture tells us that Jesus Christ wants a relationship with us. And he wants to speak to us. And he wants to walk with us. And he wants to talk with us. And, and let us know, not only, you know what I mean, what's going to happen at the end times because the, God has his teachers to inform us of that, okay? But he wants to tell us tomorrow what we're, where we should go and where we should walk and who we should talk to and you name it. And, and this, is, this is what I'm interested in, where to, to help the church to be, to be where they need to be. Hallelujah. But anyways, we'll start. And, and the thing about uh, this, this message, the Lord sh spoke to me quite a few months ago, more than a couple of months, more than a couple of years, almost a couple of years. And, uh, and, and, and he said, I want you to start studying how to know or to distinguish the voice of the Lord. All right. I was reading a book at the time. I was studying. I was doing a teaching in, in, in church as well. On, on the power of knowing God. And one of these little books, it was just a little study. It lasted for about four weeks. And if you desire that book, I can, I can show it to you. It was, it's, it's a book by Kay Arthur. I don't know if you know Kay Arthur, if you've heard of her. Uh, and and uh, it, the book was called The Power of Knowing God. It was a Bible study. And this is what she says. And I will read it word for word what she said in that in one of her statements, she said, so much of our confusion and our pain, our uncertainty and wrong decisions in life come because we do not know God. We may know about him or we may know what others say about him, but we do not know what God says about himself. God took Hundreds and hundreds of years to show his people who he is and what we need to know about him. She also says, uh, do we know for ourselves who he really is? 
how he conducts himself in the affairs of mankind. And she also says, when we know God as he really is, we have a power in our lives and an ability to stand firm. A true understanding of God's character leads not just to knowledge, but to action. All we have to do is follow some of the lives of who God demonstrated in his word. It says in, in Daniel 11 and 32, he says, The people who know their God will display strength and take action. This is New King James. Okay. Knowing God enables us as believers to display strength in times of stress and take action when the rest of the world seems to be immobile. <laughs> well, we know what immobility is happening, especially in the world we live in right now. All right. Jeremiah 31. Let, let, turn with me, please, to Jeremiah chapter 31. And, and I, I really want to go through a little bit of this tonight so to show you where God's mindset is on knowing Him. You know something, God? He, he, here he, Jeremiah talks about a new covenant. Well, we know this new covenant. We've all been, we've all, you know what I mean? Especially in this class, in this this. This setting here, the new, uh, the, uh, the kingdom, uh, regional kingdom network. I mean, we've been taught for the last two years now about what this covenant means to God. You know, and God started a covenant. He had a covenant. If you go back in the Old Testament and, and you see God started a covenant with Abraham. It's called the Abrahamic covenant. And it went on throughout the centuries. But then God says, now I am going to start a new covenant. And this is what I want to talk to you about tonight. Because Jesus brought us that new covenant. But Jeremiah preached about it. And if we, if we look at Jeremiah 31 and 31. Okay. Uh, 30, here it says... It says, now listen, now you, can, if you, you let me know if you can see yourself in this. All right? All right? Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord. What days are those? Right now. Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah, not according to the, the, the covenant that I made with their forefathers or, the fa or their fathers in the day that I took them out by the hand and led them out of the land of Egypt. My covenant which they broke, though I was a husband to them, says the Lord. Hallelujah. And you know something? God has never changed. He's still a husband to us. Hallelujah. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law in their minds. I will write it on their hearts. And I will be their God. And they shall be my people. Hallelujah. When Jesus Christ, when Jesus came to this life, to this world, the Son of God, and we accepted Him, we took on that covenant. Hallelujah. That covenant was for us. And now He has written on our hearts and, and He's put His laws in our hearts. And now we are his people. So I'm asking you, when has that covenant taken place? It is now. He says, I will forgive their iniquity and their sins I will remember no more. Have you thought, I'm going to ask you a question here tonight. Have you thought why you love the Lord your God? Yeah. 
I'm not afraid of silence. I'm, I, I love to stand here and look at the people and, and wait and see their thinking in their minds. Sometimes people get nervous when it's too much silence. But sometimes silence we, makes us think, all right? And we, we live in an age right now, Pastor Hank has just talked about it here. We live in an age and now that we need to start putting these thoughts in our hearts and so, so that God can work with them. And when he does, and when we do this, we'll see as we go here tonight, we'll see that, that this is where God speaks to us. Hallelujah. Unless you know the Lord that way. You know something? Well, I'm talking about it because this is what he says. Let, let me give you a little bit of an example. Maybe I'm stepping ahead of myself here a little bit. And my, I might repeat myself a little bit. But a few years ago, you know, I, when I really started working at this and and the Lord had told me to start studying on how to recognize his voice. And he says, I want you to now hear. Because I was standing right here one Sunday morning. Am I out of the way here? I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I like to walk around. Sorry about that. But I was sitting right there in that. In that in the, there was a worship going on in the church here. And the Holy Spirit spoke to my heart. And he says, do you hear me? Then all of a sudden, there's a message, you know. It doesn't happen to me very often. But there was a message that came into my mind, and I could not lose it. All of a sudden, I came, the pastor was preaching. There was another man, and I came up, and I said, Sir, I says, I, I need to give this message right now, because the Holy Spirit won't let me stop. You know, and, and the Lord said, I want my people to hear me. So now I want you to start studying on how to recognize the voice of the Lord. So one night, one night I was at home. I was in bed, sleeping. And the Holy, like, like you know, this is, I felt like, like Samuel. Remember Samuel? Remember little Samuel? Okay, that he heard the voice of the Lord. And, and, and the Lord said to me, in, in, in my sleep, the Lord says to me, get up and walk with me. And I thought it was just a dream, you know, I'm hearing, you know, in my dream. And all of a sudden the Lord said again, to, I heard him. And I actually got up and I thought my wife was talking because she talks in her sleep sometimes. She'll deny it, but sometimes she talks in her sleep. Okay. And... Uh, so I said to Carol, I said, did you say something? She said, I go to sleep, you know. So I went back to sleep, tried to go back to sleep. Then the Holy Spirit said to me again, then the Lord said to me again, get up and walk with me. You know something? I got up and I said, okay, Lord, I'm, you know. And he says, no, get up and walk with me. He said that three times to me. I says, okay. So I got up, put clothes on so I could walk I go outside. And I went and for a walk, and I actually went for a walk with the Lord. I actually heard him speak to me. Why? You know something? If we truly are, are interested and de determined to hear God and to, to see what God wants us to do with our lives and you name it. And God will, and, you know, will go along with us. And he will bring us to that point. And I, after a while, I, I, I started getting up. And, you know, and I'm an early riser. But here, the, that, that early morning was early. It was like 2 o'clock in the morning. And then after that, I started getting up around 4.30 or 5 o'clock every morning and, and, and going for a walk with the Lord. And just talk. Not every, and, and, and you know something? That was the only time really that I went with it, to walk with him that I, he actually spoke to me, that I could actually hear him talking to me. You know? 
I go to walk every morning now, okay, to, so that, but I, I meditate on, on, on his word, I take a piece of scripture, and we're going to talk about a little bit, at the end of this lesson, you know, we, we need to start practicing also, oh God, and, and somebody reminded me tonight, about, you know, you should let us practice a little bit, about, about how to hear the voice of the Lord, but let's, let's go on it a little bit here. I, I, I said that because I wanted to, I, I, it just the Holy Spirit was just pointing that out to me. So I, 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 we decided that, that I need to write up a lesson, like a, a, a teaching on how to recognize the voice of the Lord. Hallelujah. So, so anyways, God created us. I'm telling you something. God created us for intimate friendship with himself. Do you know that? You know, we haven't really, we haven't really gone that way. The church hasn't really uh, started teaching that. You know, oh, we, we teach that trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding in all your ways. You know, we teach all those scriptures, but we really don't teach the practical side. And, and, and I believe God wants us to start doing that. This is the Christian way of doing things. God desires us to have, because we are eternal beings. We will walk with Him forever. He wants us now to learn not only that, but He wants us to be involved in all of His, his moving that He's doing right now, so that more people will come to Him. And know him. That's the, that's the purpose that Jesus Christ came. So that we might be discipled for him. And hear his voice. He walked with his disciples. And then, then he gave them authority and power to be part of his life through the Holy Spirit. It's made clear in the Bible. Old covenant writings testified of what was to come or the new covenant writings that was, that, that what was to come and, and how God desired to walk with us. If you turn now to, to Exodus. And I, I just want to show you something that the Lord showed me in here. It, it turned to Exodus not, uh, chapter 29. Might take a little bit of while to get through this, but praise the Lord. We got lots of time, don't we? Amen. But see where the Lord, listen to the, to the scripture now. But listen to the Spirit of God, what he's telling you through these scriptures. Okay? Exodus 29, verse 43. Let's start with 43. And here it says what it says here. And again, like I said to you tonight. Every time you read the scriptures, if you really see this scripture as a message to you from God, then you'll start hearing the voice of the Lord in it, through it. That's the greatness of God's word, okay? Because it gets down into our inner being. It's our inner being that speaks with the Lord. It's our spirit, our born-again spirit that communicates with the Spirit of God. And once you start realizing that, then we can really start hearing His voice. Here it says, in verse 43, it says, And there I will meet with the children of Israel, and the tabernacle shall be sanctified by my glory. One night the Holy Spirit said to me, he says, who's the tabernacle? Where do I live now? You see, the Old Testament was just a, 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 a form of what's to come. We are the tabernacle. We are the place where God resides in. And he wants us to show, he wants to show us his glory. He wants to show us. What, who he is and what he is. So I will consecrate the tabernacle of meeting. Hallelujah. And the altar. 
I will also consecrate both Aaron and his sons to minister to me as priests. And the Holy Spirit said, you see, you see, I, I, I want to consecrate you so that you may minister to me, saith the Lord. Hallelujah. I will dwell among the children of Israel and they, and I will be their God, their Lord, their Redeemer, their Healer, their Savior. Hallelujah. And they shall know And the Holy Spirit said to me, go back in Scripture. Where does it say in Scripture, and Adam knew his wife? Adam knew. You know, they knew because they, they were intimate with them. Okay? That's how God wants us to be. And, and, and somehow he has to, some of us, yeah, we're so hard-headed, he has to wake us up at 2 o'clock in the morning. So we can see it. And they shall know that I am the Lord their God, who brought them out of the land of Egypt. Well, he sure brought me out of the land of Egypt. Hallelujah. That I may dwell among them. I am the Lord their God. Hallelujah. But I want to show you a little something. A few weeks ago, not, is it last, not last week, the week before I think or whatever, there was a man standing in this pulpit and when we uh, initiated Pastor Thomas and he spoke about this and, and it really moved on me. And in verse 33 of, 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 uh, of Exodus, it, it, verse 11, at chapter 33, verse 11 it says, So the Lord spoke to Moses face to face as a man speaks to his, his friend. That's who God is. That's who God wants to be. It's not only to Moses. You know, there's a problem with this thing here for many, many years. It has been that the church has been wanting to, to put up the man that stands in this pulpit or the man that stands up here and the rest of the people, you're just hearers, you're not doers. But that's not true. That was a lie. A lie initiated by the power of hell so that you may not get to know. Because if you get to know who your God is, you will be victorious over him. Hallelujah. And the world will see who Jesus truly is. Hallelujah. And he has to be known. And, and showed by his people. And listen, listen also. Now, now go to Numbers. Please go to Numbers. Uh, Numbers chapter 12. Yeah, I just need to show you this. Chapter 12, verse 8. It says... And, you know, he's talking about Moses now. And he's talking about Moses because, because somehow uh, Aaron and Miriam were, were, were you know, were bad-mouthing Moses. Why? Because he had married a, a woman outside of his, his area, okay, and everything. And God said to him, I says, listen to me now. I want to show you this. There's something else we, we need to learn from this lesson, but that's another story altogether, another message. There is such a thing as, as, as a delegated authority, and God calls that in the church. I was sharing that with somebody the other day because they came to me and asked me questions because <laughs> there's a new pastor that started and whatever, and they wanted to know, we got to lay the law down to this man. And I said to him, who are you? And I showed him this scripture. And where, where it says that God, God, who God calls, God enlightens, and God, God gives authority. Okay? And now God, now you need to start it submitted. Okay, this, the, the, the church of Jesus Christ is not a democracy. It's a theocracy. Now, but that's another story. I, I just want to show you something else here. 
In Numbers 12 and 8, it says, With Moses I will speak mouth to mouth, even apparently, and not in dark speeches. Once we know our God, God starts speaking to us so that we, everything that he says to us is apparent to us. We, we start understanding it. Why? By the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. And not in dark speeches. And the similitude of the Lord shall he behold. Hallelujah. You know what the similitude means? It means what is, what is real and what is uh, uh, similar with God will be similar with us. What God says, you know, we sang these songs tonight. The power of God. Nothing is impossible for him. Do we really believe it? If we believed it, then it would happen. That's why the word. And then the Holy Spirit said to me, okay, and I'm not going to go over this because you all know this scripture. Jesus wants to be our friend, our brother, our savior, our healer, our comforter. Hallelujah. And once we see this, and, and we don't see him this far away God somewhere where maybe once in a while if we pray a little bit. No. He wants to every day have a relationship. And, and, and I was going to share about, about the 23rd Psalm here, but this is a, a, if I go there, I won't be done till 8 o'clock. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. This, this, this scripture, this whole teaching is, is amazing. Once we start to wide, and then the Lord said to me, in that walk one day, the Lord said to me, he asked me a question that was very similar. He, the Lord said, Frank, why do you love me? He wanted to know why I loved him. And I said, Lord, because you loved me first. You died for me. I want to understand what you really did for me so that I can love you the way you need to be loved. And the Lord says, okay. Turn to 23rd Psalm. I sat there in the park down the street from my place reading that 23rd Psalm one morning. And, and, and the power of God came over me like it was, like, like, a, like a, a blanket. And I started seeing, you know, this is where God wants us to be. If we would only talk to him and sing, okay, Lord, where do you want me? What do you want to do with me? And, and, I, and, and, and be, be humility. You, you know what I mean? Go here before him with a, with a humble heart. And there he comes to us. Hallelujah. In Isaiah 41 and 8, the Lord says, But you, Israel, are my servant. Jacob, whom I have chosen. Do you know something? We are. Israel, we are Jacob. God has, has, has grafted us into that. That's another message, by the way. But, but God has brought us to us. So whenever you see in scriptures where God talks about Israel or Jacob, that's us. That, that is us. Okay? So take it to heart. Take it for real. Whom I have chosen. He have chosen you. And he has called you like he called Abraham, my friend. He wants to speak to you. He wants to call you by your first name. In John chapter 15 and 14, he says, You are my friend if you do whatever I command you. If we seek the mind of, of, of the Lord, he will call us his friend. We are his friend. Hebrews 13, I've just given you scriptures if you're writing them. Let your conduct be without covenants. Be content with such things as you have. For he himself has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. The Lord will never leave you nor forsake you. You need to know that. Okay, like the Lord said to me one day, he says, okay, are you, you know what I mean? You have a relationship with Carol. You don't worry that she's going to leave you tomorrow. 
Why? Because you've been together now. Well, my wife, Carol, and I have been together. We celebrate 53 years there a few uh, last month. I mean, I know her. She knows me. You know, before we even say anything. Why? Because we, we've known each other. We, and that, that kind of relationship is the, what the Lord really desires. Let it, let, it not, let it not be that God is so far away. Let it not be that Jesus is so far away. The Holy Spirit has to be your friend. You, have, you, you know, a, a relationship so that every day, every minute, you speak to him. And he will reply back to you. So how can we recognize the voice of the Lord? Now this, the lesson really starts now. Okay, the rest of it was just preliminary. All right? In John chapter 10. How much time do I have, Pastor? Three hours? Well, praise God. All right. That's minus what? Okay, John chapter 10. And, and verse, let's go to verse 2. It says, but he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the doorkeeper opens and the sheep uh, hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. Like I was just telling you a while ago. Jesus, he's talking to you here. Calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. He goes ahead of them and the sheep follow him because they know they know his voice. We need to practice this. We need to get to know the voice of our Lord. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me. They know me intimately. My sheep hear my voice. I know them and they follow me. I know my Lord. And I know my Lord speaks to me because he knows, because he is my Lord. And my heart seeks after his heart. It's like the, all of the lessons we've been listening to here for, for two years. That now our hearts is not deceiving us. When we hear something or, or even the scriptures. Do you know something? Even reading scriptures and if, you, and if we haven't really uh, uh, sought to change our own hearts so that by the scripture, by the word of God, by the, the intent word of God put into our heart, if we, if we uh, read the scriptures sometimes, even our own hearts will deceive us, what that means. I was sharing a lesson not too long ago about, about uh, uh, you know, the, the parable of, you know, of the... Of the, uh, not the, the parable of the sower. Yeah, the parable of the talents. And, and, and Jesus was sharing this, this parable because he wanted to show how God is for his people. That God wants to bless us. So he gives one talent to this person. He gives an five to this one. He gives ten to this one. And the one with the one uh, uh, went and buried it. Like a lot of us, we bury our, what the Lord, okay? Why? Because we thought God, or like he did, he thought God was a, 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 a God ready there with a stick, okay? Because he didn't know his God. So his heart deceived him. Thinking that God is a hard taskmaster, and he's not. He wants to bless you without measure, but he knows your heart better than you know your own. Okay? So don't deceive, don't, don't allow your heart to be deceived. God is a, 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 an amazing God, if we, but we need to get to know him. We of the people, we, this group here, like I shared to you tonight, we, uh, where God has started to move us into that other realm that, that's, going, that's, that's soon to happen. 
That power of God, that, that, that when God pours His Spirit upon people, God does need people that knows their God and knows how to hear His voice. Hallelujah. And that's why we need to study this. That's why God called David in the scriptures a man after my own heart. Why? Because he loved the Lord. If, I mean, the other day in, in one of my scriptures, uh, I, I, I woke up in the morning and the Holy Spirit said to me, Psalm 27. I opened, I, 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 you know, I knew I had read Psalm 27 before, and so, but I, I just went to Psalm 27. And, and then the Holy Spirit said to me, do you know why God, do you know why I call David a man after my own heart? Because of this. Because of this. You see, he wrote down, David wrote down. Listen to this, Lord. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? Hallelujah. We need to understand that God loves to hear us read his word back to him. He gave us this word so that he may enlighten our hearts and, get, and, and bring us to a point that we know who the Lord truly is. Hallelujah. I'm not going to go over all of that because it's going to take me a lot more time. But it says at the end of the scriptures, Wait on the Lord. Wait on the Lord. That means sit there and wait. Read the scriptures. Know who he's talking, that he is talking to you. Whenever you read the scriptures, he's talking to you. He's put that scripture in there just for you. Hallelujah. So wait on him and he'll speak to you. I'd like to read you a statement uh, from uh, one of my, uh, I'm, I'm sort of a reader. I love to read books. And uh, there's a book that I have called God's Perfect Will, which is from uh, Campbell Morgan, a, a, a writer. And he, re he, he wrote this, and, and I wrote it down in here. It says, the doctrine of the inner light is not sufficiently taught. The thing about it is that God has enlightened us, all right? We have the Spirit of God with us. I just read it to you out of the Old Testament a while ago, that we are the tabernacle where God lives. If you ever did a study of the tabernacle of old, where, where, the holy, where, where God would come down into the Holy of Holies, you are the Holy of Holies. Hallelujah. But that doctrine has not been sufficiently taught, what Cam Morgan says here. He says, to the, the individual believer who is, by the very fact of relationship to Christ, indwelt by the Holy Spirit of God, there is granted the direct impressions of the Spirit of God on the Spirit of man. That means God is speaking to us, like I was saying before. You have a born-again spirit that God now, now relates to. That's where you, 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 that's how you speak to God, through your spirit. But your, your born again spirit has to take pre precedence now, not your body, not your mind, okay? It's your, the mind of your spirit that, that has to take precedence. And, and that only happens by the spirit of God. When I've submitted myself, to knowing God and um, I don't and not not desiring anything less. Hallelujah. He says here, imparting the knowledge of His will in matters of the simplest, greatest, and greatest importance. This has to be sought and waited for. This is what Morgan says. When a word or a thought comes to us, those who truly seek the Lord God, the voice of the Lord, His God, He can receive it. God has made us in that way. 
We, are, we have that instrument has been installed in us. So that we can, do you think those, those men of old, that Jeremiah and, and, and Isaiah and, and you know, the, 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 the great prophets, do you think they, they, they were just, no, they were men and women just like you are. They were just, they had just a desire for more for God. Hallelujah. So now, how do we know whether it is a word from God to us? What is it that indicates it has a divine source in it? His word. I, I love a statement years ago in Bible school. I think Pastor Hank's going to remember who that is. Uh, a teacher said to us, it said, you know, you know how do I know that God speaks to me? I'm not that smart. To know that it's me that thinks this. Pastor Kathy used to be, that was one of her favorite sayings in Bible school. I'm not that smart. I can, de decide, I can decide in my own mind right away that these are my thoughts and these are God's thoughts. Why? Because she knew the word. Okay. Hallelujah. We can, of course, know that the word is from God. Okay. If it corresponds with the plain statement or the meaning of the Bible and consistent with soundly interpreted biblical teaching. You know what I mean? The devil is going to speak to you, of course. And, you know, later on in another teaching here that I'd like to do, I'd like to do some practical stuff and whatever, but I'd like to show you some examples also that, that where this, this thing is not from God and this is from God, okay? We can all know, for example, that God directs us not to worship an idol or, be, or, a, or listen to a lie. I mean, we, the, old, the world got started with this where Eve listened to a lie instead of the, the actual truth. It would have been, should have been easy for her to know God didn't say that. But it has to be by experience. Beyond this, the only answer to the question, how do we know whether this is from God? It comes only, and you should write this down, only by experience. We need to experience God. It needs to be a practical thing that we decide that I want to know God. I want to know God. That's why David was called a man after his own heart because he sought the Lord for everything. And we, did, we need to do the same. The most important about, a part about hearing our Lord is to know and to experience the salvation and the redemption we have in Him and be thankful for Him. Okay? What is that? What, is, has, he, what has He provided for me in this salvation, in this redemption? And, 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 where, and what am I without it? You know, it's pretty soon it's coming, the, you know, the, 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 the day that we celebrate once a year called Thanksgiving. That day should be every day. I'll tell you something. The voice of God will never contradict His Word. And relationship is a must. We must have a relationship with Him. If we think that we can get by on with Sunday morning or maybe Wednesday night or whenever you, 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 you get together for learning the word, that's not enough. God wants more of it. God wants more of our lives. He wants it all, actually. He's a jealous God. He doesn't want to share, it with, share us with anybody. And it's through his word and our desire to know him, through his word, that will bring us to the place of truly Hearing the Lord. Hallelujah. Only the Bible as a whole can be treated as the word of God. All right. We can, we can read books or all, of, all kinds of other things. 
Well, and I love to read. I, I'm, I'm a strong reader. Uh, not as much as my wife. She reads at least a book every two days. Okay? But I, 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 sometimes it takes me a month to read a book because I don't quite just read it. I like to study books. So I, 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 I like to see the word behind the words. And we need to do that with the word of God as well. I love the word by, you know, one of my favorite authors also is E.W. Kenyon. And, and he says this, he says, the word has to be applied to us as individual or to our individualized circumstances or they remain no part of our lives. You know, we can read something or whatever, but unless we, we, we take the word of God and, and, and apply it to my life, it becomes, it, it stays out here somewhere, okay? It doesn't become part of who you are. Only by experience can we get to really know the voice of our Creator, our Savior, and His Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. And, and for a practical thing here, like my wife has a little dog. He doesn't like me very much, by the way. But, I mean, she, she, spe she speaks a word and he's right there, okay? Why? Because she has, an ex she has a, a relationship with him. And so often we think that, 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 that uh, uh, we can have an ex a relationship with God. We can, uh, you know, come to church and we can read the word once, only once in a while and stuff like that and have a relationship with the Lord. It has to be practiced. Hallelujah. Isaiah says, says, talks about this. He says, <clears throat> in Isaiah 1 and 3, it says, The ox knows its owner, and the donker its master's crib, but Israel does not know. My people do not understand my word. Jeremiah makes a similar complaint with reference to a non-domesticated creature. He says this in Jeremiah 8, 7. Even the stork in the heavens knows its time, and the turtle nub the swallow, and the crane observe their time, the time of their coming, but my people do not know their, the judgment of the Lord. That's, that's sad, though, you know, if you, if you really start understanding that, that, that the people of God, the, pe the, the, the people God called and and God has not forgotten it don't believe don't believe the lie there that God has forgotten the Jews the Israelites okay that God is going coming back to Israel and whatever and and he's bringing them all back to Israel but that's another story that's another teaching but the thing about it is why was it that they were they they were taken away and everything because God promised it in his word that he would if they forsake him and the, the thing has not changed with us either. If we forsake our God, we're going to be judged for it as well. Hallelujah. I think it's going to be more though because we know him more. Because Jesus was sent to us as well. Hallelujah. <clears throat> By contrast, there is a light that shines for every human being though. It says in John 1, it says in John 1 and 9, it says, That was the true light which gives light to every man coming into the world. I say to you tonight, we've been given a light. We have been given Jesus. The Jews didn't have that. Oh, they had the promise of a, of a Savior. Yes. But they never had Jesus until Jesus came and they forsake him because of the, the, the mindset that they had in their own hearts for centuries. Pastor Hank spoke about tonight about the Catholic movement and, and the big denominational movement that went on in the world. I was raised a Catholic. And just a few weeks ago, I attended a funeral of a, a brother-in-law of mine in a Catholic church. And I went because the, the, guy, the, the priest that was doing the, the funeral was, you know, and, and, and there's a bit of a thing with me about, about the black people. God put a heart in my heart, my, in my, myself for a long time ago for the black people. 
That's why we spent so many years in Africa, I think. Okay. And this man was, a, was from the, the, the Congo. And all of a sudden, there was, a, there was a lady there that he would talk to about, talk to once in a while, and I heard him speaking in Swahili. Well, we learned a little bit of Swahili when we're in Africa. So, I mean, I, I, I hear certain things. So I went and talked to him, and I, I spoke to him in Swahili a bit, and whatever. Oh, and he said, oh, you're, you're, you know, you're, you're, you understand the language. And, but he's a Catholic priest. And I told him who I was, and, and he says, oh, I'd like to talk to you. So later on, we left the, the funeral home, and we, we went to the, back to the church, and, you know, in the basement, and they had some food and whatever. And whatever. So I was sitting down there with my brother, and he came to sit down with us. And we had a conversation about, hey, God and Catholicism versus, you know, and I said to him, I said, you know, I says, where's the relationship? Where's the, you know, where's the relationship? I mean, I heard you speak the mass you did before, okay? And I said, it's, it's so ritualized that where is the relationship with your God now? And the church has pushed that for centuries. So now, the, the, now, now the, where's the responsibility of us teaching the, the people as, as disciples, as, as teachers of the word of God? Where's the responsibility now? You know what I mean? The few scriptures that you read, you, none of that was explained. How many times do you explain? You know, even the Eucharist where you, where you, you, you show communion. How do you explain that to a people? They, they, now they, and, and, and the way you explain it is wrong. Jesus shed his blood and has body broken for us so that we might accept the, his blood and might accept salvation and, and, and our forgiveness of sins. And he's washed us. He's made us righteous already. Except now most, the, the bigger part of the church that we call today, which are living in darkness, are, are, are living thinking that God is, a, is, a, is a, a, a huge taskmaster, holding them down to their sins. Yet Jesus has completely taken our sins away as far as the east is from the west. Hallelujah. The thing about it is that unless we understand that we've received the true light, unless we understand the, 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 the salvation that we have received and, and the great salvation that we have received, the great redemption that we have received, the great healing that we, deliverance that we've received, unless we understand that we cannot be uh, uh, grateful for the salvation that we have. And so therefore now it, it, it sort of closes or, or blinds us to the relationship that we have with our Savior. I love the, the quote by, uh, I love this other uh, writer. His name is Francis. It's my namesake, okay? Francis Frankie Payne, which spoke this <clears throat> and is amazing about the true light which Jesus says, but he says, but most often it really only vainly strikes the blinded eyes of fallen humanity. So often, even the redeemed. Most of the time, the redeemed don't understand the salvation that they've received. Sharakurama. Why? Because most men, even the redeemed, live out of their own unpurified hearts. We've, we, 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 we've learned that in these... Hallelujah. Praise the name. 1 John 2.11 says, But he who hates his brother is in darkness and walks in darkness. Most of the church today walks in that darkness and does not know where he is going because the darkness has blinded his eyes. Hallelujah. Psalm 19, 1-7 talks about, about the word that has gone out to the very ends of the earth often falls on deaf ears. 
Frankie Payne says, but those who have given, I love this statement, but those who have been given the additional birth, do you have the additional birth? Okay. I was born of my mother, then I was born of the Spirit. All right. This new birth through the redemptive message of Christ that has entered their lives, they can learn by experience to hear God as He speaks, by recognizing His Word and confidently interacting with Him. What He's saying, He says, you, can, you, you have been given a new life that lives in you. You are now the, 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 the tabernacle where God lives. And now He wants to function through you and and now you can understand his word by relating to to him and all of a sudden he starts explaining to you and it says another place and and I, I can go on and on and on here all night here but it says in another place that there's you know where where you don't need to be taught anymore do you know that we have the spirit of god oh we do need teachers believe me we do need teachers and we need this all right, in the church. But God wants to be the central teacher in our hearts. He wants to be the central teacher in our whole. The Holy Spirit, yeah, that's who he's given us holy, <coughs> the Holy Spirit for. So that we might know and understand that he has called us. And that he has now given us a, a, a new life within us. And he lives within us. And now he wants to participate in our lives. Hallelujah. I was going to go on and, and talk tonight about, about John. Where John says in, in 1 John 1. He says, that which was from the beginning which we have heard. Which we have seen with our eyes. Which have looked upon. And our hands have handled and concerning the word of life. That which we have seen and heard we declare to you. God desires that that which we have seen. He wants us to start seeing him. Touching him. And declaring him. That's what he wants. That's, that's our mandate as disciples. Hallelujah. So the world may seem. One of my favorite. One of my favorite scriptures. Is, is in, in John chapter 17. Where Jesus prays. For those he calls. For those afar off. That was us. Okay. And he says Lord. That the world may see. We have been called to be a light on, on a hill. And we cannot be that light without the light of the world. And the light of the world resides in us already. And as we seek him, as we desire more of him, as his anointing starts coming into us, now the, all of a sudden the light of the world starts shining and we start speaking. His word, not ours. Praise the Lord. And unless we hear him, that's not going to happen. Praise the Lord. Let me close with this here. Uh, I, I got so much more. Let me push it back here a little bit. Uh, the, the reason why is because it's getting late here. It's 8 o'clock already. One of my favorite things one of my favorite songs, and the Lord brought this to my heart many years ago, about five, six years ago. You'll recognize it. I mean, Twyla Paris. Anybody remember Twyla Paris? Okay. And, and I heard I, one, one, one day I was coming back. Like I, I've, I've been on the road quite a few years. Hank knows that. I, I've traveled from coast to coast with the job I had before. And they still try to get me go now even. But one day I was coming back from Thunder Bay. I was driving from Thunder Bay, Ontario. And, and on, on a CD that somebody had given me was a song called When You Speak to Me by Twyla Paris. And I'd like to read this for you tonight because I, I want you to understand something. That when God speaks to you, you know it's God. The thing about it is when God speaks to you, it changes you. 
from the inside because that's where he resides. He speaks to you from the inside. He's not up there somewhere here, okay? God is in me. I'm, the, I'm a vessel where God resides in. I'm the, one of the tabernacles where God resides in. That new covenant, that's what happened, okay? It says, when you speak to me, when I take the time to listen, I'm, I'd, I'd sing it, but you'd all walk away, okay? When, I, when you speak, when you, when you is God, when God, when Lord, God, when you speak to me, when I take the time to listen, there's more than what I think I feel. Okay? When you speak to me, when I sit and still the motion, there is nothing left but what is real. God changes everything. There is an answer to every question. The answer is you. And the heavens open when you speak to me, pouring light into my waiting heart. And the music fills an ocean silently, quietly, when you speak to me. When you speak to me, when you call me and surround me, there is peace to cover any pain. When you speak to me, you place your word inside me. I am filled and I am strong again. There is a reason for every longing. The reason is you. Do you long for something? The reason is, God, is Jesus. And the heavens open when you speak to me, pouring light into my waiting heart. And the music fills an ocean silently, quietly, when you speak to me. When you speak, when, when Jesus speaks to you, when the Holy Spirit speaks to you, when the Father speaks to you, it changes everything. When I heard that song, I was driving from Thunder Bay. I, I, I couldn't, the, the whole car was filled with the Spirit of God. And, I, and, and I, I, I couldn't drive. I had to stop. God desires us to start learning how to speak, how he speaks to us. And, and, and this, last, this thing tonight was just the beginning because... We need to understand that the word everywhere, I mean, I, 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 I flipped over about six or seven pages here because there's so much in the word where, G, where God talks that he wants, he wants for us to hear him. He, his heart is broken at the church because we don't hear him. Let me ask you this. Anybody married here? All right? If, 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 if your wife or your, your, your husband talks to you and you don't hear him, what happens? Okay. Not. Okay. After a while, it gets pretty quiet in that house. Okay. And there's no speaking at all. Well, God is not like that. He is still going to long. He's still going to call. He's still going to uh, uh, yearn us to, to, to speak to him. He's still going to speak to us. He says he never leaves us, nor ever forsakes us. Because that's his promise and his, his word is true. It never changes. Okay? But he, his heart is still broken. Because we don't listen to him. And the thing about it is that there's an urgent call now. There is an urgent call for the church. For the body of Christ. For the tabernacle where God resides. To hear him. To speak. And then to speak back his word. Because we need to, we need to spill out what Jesus says to us. So the word may heal. Hallelujah. There's a word, there's a world out there that needs healing. And we are the answer to that healing. Jesus has done it already. It's already been done. But God gave us the mandate that it goes through us. 
through us now. That's why Jesus left. Jesus left and he went back to heaven and he said to the disciples, stay in Jerusalem until my power goes into you. So now, once you've got that power, you will, nothing will be impossible for you. So now do it. Go. And I will never, I will be with you forever, he says, even to the end of the world. And he has been. He's never left, okay? So next time we, we do it, I can't be here next Sunday because, next, next Sunday because uh, I've got, a, I've got a, 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 an appointment with a dentist. I've been going up north, northern Ontario. Uh, they, they, my, my teeth were really bad in my mouth and whatever. And, and uh, so I went to my dentist and he said, okay, I'll do the job for $62,000. So uh, I have a, a, a cousin. See, that's blessings of God here. Okay. I have a nephew that's a dentist up north. I sent him this thing with the, 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 the pictures and everything. And he says, oh, and he says, look, I'll tell you what. You come and see me. I'll give you the family uh, deal. Okay. And he's giving me the family deal, and it's costing me less than a third of what they quoted me here. So every so often, three, four weeks now, it started about two months ago, I go up there and whatever, and now I got new teeth at the top, some at the bottom, I got to put more at the back. And the next, next, next time I go up there, I, I want you to pray for me because this is going to be a bit harder because what they're going to do, they're going to take some bone out of somewhere else in my body and, 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 and build my, my upper bones in my jaw so that they can put an implant in there so uh, yeah so, but anyways I still counted the blessings of the Lord all right praise the Lord Amen. but anyways I want you to stand up with me here tonight okay and I'll tell you something I'm going to give you a, a, a little bit of a homework see a teacher always gives the students homework all right I'm going to give you homework. I want you to go home and I want you to pick a scripture anywhere in scripture where the Lord lead, you feel the Lord leading you. And I want you to, to, to read it and study it and whatever. And, and, and then I want you to write down what the Holy Spirit tells you about it. Okay? Because he's going to speak to you about it. You ask him. He, he will never say no to you. He will always speak to you. Yeah, so therefore, write down. I remember I was in Bible school that's quite a few years ago now. But, you know, one of the lessons was exactly that. You go home, write it down, take this scripture, write it down, and see what the Holy Spirit speaks to you about. And there was always something. God always speaks to us. It could be many different things, depending on your life, because God will only always speak to you what he what what is dealing with your life okay he's not going to give you some big big message for the prime minister of canada unless that's where god is calling you to but you know 90 percent of the time he'll talk to you about your own life your child your your, your wife your you know okay or a revelation of the word so it'll change your mind and your heart. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Father, we just praise you, Lord God, tonight. Lord, we thank you, Lord, that you have never left us, never forsake us. But most of all, Lord, we thank you, Lord, for that great salvation that you have provided for us. We thank you, Lord God, that you have changed us. You have made us new people, Lord God. Lord, you have even put yourself in us, Lord, and made us, Lord, that holy of holy, that place, Lord, where you reside. Almighty God, the creator of heaven and earth, Lord, that you have called all, all the, uh, and named every stars in heaven, Father God. Hallelujah. You have created all of this, yet, Lord, you reside in me. Hallelujah. What a mighty God you are, Lord. Hallelujah. And, Lord, nothing is impossible for you. 
So, Father, in Jesus' name, whatever need there is in this place, Lord, Lord God, we thank you, Lord God, because we know that you have already, already provided it. Father, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Why? Because it's because of your son, Jesus, that we have this great redemption. So, Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you. And I pray right now, Father, that, Lord, as you speak to, our, to my brothers and sisters here, Lord God, in the coming weeks, Lord, Lord, Father, they will, they will know that you have spoken to them. And Lord, they will be able to speak back to you, Lord. And that conversation will not end. Because, Father God, you so desperately desire to speak to your people. And, Father God, we'll give you glory for all of that. And, Lord, revelations will come from us. Lord, healing from People will get saved because of it. Your purpose Will, will happen in this community, Father God. And the world will see that Jesus lives here in us. And Father God, we give you glory for that. In Jesus' precious name.